What up everybody? Instructor Beats back again today with a time unit lesson. We are finding the elapsed time within the hour today. So let's wake on up and see what we got going on today. All right, so our objective today, today I will be able to find the elapsed time when given the start time in the end time within the hour. So our first lesson for elapsed time, we found the end time. The last lesson we did together, we found the start time, and today you're gonna to be finding the elapsed time. The three lessons go together. If you're just joining us today just for this lesson, welcome aboard. If you've been with us, you know what we're about to do on our next slide. So let's take a look at our math vocabulary. Again, you don't need to write this down because you already have it in your notes from the previous lessons. Uh, but it is good to review, especially if you're new with us today. So the start time is the time that an event starts, right? That's pretty self-explanatory. The end time is the time that the event ends. And our elapsed time is the amount of time that has passed from the start of an event to the end of an event. That's typically the one that gives us a little bit of trouble at first. But once you get it, you're pretty much good to go. So let's take a look at a visual model to understand these three words. So here we have a visual model of uh, when we were making dinner. So we started making dinner at 7 p.m. That's why we labeled that the start time. We ended making the dinner, or the dinner came out of the oven at 7.50 p.m. So we labeled that the end time because, because it was the end of the event of making dinner. And then between the start time and the end time, we call that our elapsed time. So we did three different activities that totaled up to 50 minutes. The elapsed time between the start and end time was 50 minutes, right? That's the time that passed from when we started making dinner to when it came out of the oven. We show this on our number line, if you remember, using our hills in mountains. Our mountains are worth an hour, so when you put an hour down on the number line, you're going to use a mountain. Now, we don't get into mountains yet. We're going to get in that in, uh, into those in our next few lessons because right now, today, we're staying within the hour. Our minutes are our hills, okay? So we use hills, and they're just kind of like drawing an arc, right? You're drawing a hill on your number line, and it can be anything. It can be one minute, two minutes, five minutes, 10 minutes. So if you take a look at our problem here, we used a 15-minute hill, a five-minute hill, and a 30-minute hill. We broke apart our elapsed time into three different time intervals. So let's take a look at a question you might see when you're trying to find the elapsed time. So we're actually, instead of doing a level one, level two, level three format for this lesson, we're going to be doing an I do, a we do, and a you do, or you try, okay? So our first I do is saying, what is the elapsed time? So it gave us a start time of 4.22 a.m. Maybe this is when you woke up in the middle of the night because you're having a bad dream. And the end time of 4.41 when you went back to sleep, and you need to know the elapsed time. So we're going to be using our number line to do this. Now, our steps for finding the elapsed time. Okay, you can pause the video and write these down in your notes. Number one, we want to make a hill to the next friendly number. We kind of touched on that last lesson. Friendly numbers being multiples of 10, or for those who don't know what the word multiple means, a number that's ending in a zero. Step number two, you want to make a hill to the closest friendly number to the end time. And I'll show you what that I mean by that. And then number three, you're just gonna finish the elapsed time by making a hill to the end time. So let me show you what I mean by that because that might be a little bit wordy. So I'm starting at 422, okay? So I'm gonna label that down on my timeline. My next friendly number to after 22 would be 30, right? Because time is always moving. I can't go back to 20. I need to go forward, forward to 30. So I'm gonna make a leap and I know that I want to go to 430. So that's my first step. I made a hill to get to my friendly number. Now you need to copy down how many minutes that is. So 22 plus 8 is 30. So my first elapsed, elapsed time was 8 minutes. Okay, I'm not to 441 yet. Now I want to make a hill to the closest friendly number to 441. So the closest friendly number to 441 would be 440. So from 430, I want to go to 440. And how many minutes did that take me? Well, that's an obvious one, that's 10. So up here underneath my elapsed time, I'm gonna write 10 minutes. Now I'm at 440, I just need to finish this by getting to my end time, step number three. So I'm going to do a one minute hill, which is going to take me to 441. I'm gonna write this over here so I don't get messy. 
which means, oh, and then I also need to write that down over here, okay? So now I've gone from my start time to my end time. I made my three different hills. I just need to count how many total I have. Eight plus zero plus one is nine. 110 plus nothing is 10. So I have my total elapsed time for this question being 19 minutes. If you notice what I did, I just followed my three steps, right? I got to the next closest friendly number. I went to the closest friendly number to the end time, and then I just finished it by getting to the end time. Let's take a look at this we do. Okay, and I put the steps over here. We're gonna do this one together. Um, and so this is a word problem. The first thing I need to do is I need to write down my statement. So my question, oh, well, first thing I need to do is write down my steps to sides check. If you don't know what sides check is, check out our awesome song. You can see the link up here. Um, fantastic song explains our word problem strategy. So my question says, how long did it take me to get to the store and back home? So my statement is going to say, it took me, right, blank time to get to the store and back home. Now I write my statement before I circle anything because this is gonna be my guiding light. We don't do cubes here, cubes is stupid, okay? Um, you, you shouldn't be circling keywords and important information before you underline the question. That doesn't make any sense, right? You need to know the question beginning with the end in mind to know what's important about the word problem, all right? So it took me blank time, I'm looking for anything about time, and then anything about the store and back home. So I left for the grocery store at 8.23 a.m. I am not identifying that because it's a number, it's, right? We're not doing cubes. I'm identifying that because that is a time, which is what my statement and my question were asking me about. You should always have a reason for what you're circling. Don't just be a number grabber, okay? I got back from the grocery store at 851. Again, important not because it's a number, important because it's about a time, which is what my statement's asking me. It, how long did it take me to get to the store and back home? So I see that they're giving me a start time and an end time, and it's asking me for how much time I spent doing something, which means this is an elapsed time problem. So I'm gonna develop the same plan that I've developed for when I found the start time or the end time. I'm gonna label my start, my elapsed time, and my end time. Ooh, try, try to be a little bit neater, give myself more space. And I'm going to draw a number line to help me out, okay? So I left for the grocery store 823, I got back from the grocery store. It's asked me how long did it take me to get to the store and back home? So my event is the traveling to the store and coming back home. The start of that event was 8.23 a.m., okay? The end of that event when I got back home was 8.51 a.m., and I'm looking for the elapsed time. So I'm gonna start with 8.23, and I know I'm going to 8.51, but I'm gonna start just right here. So my first step, again, is to go to my nearest friendly number. So my nearest friendly number after 8.23 would be a seven minute hop, and that would take, or hill, sorry, not hop, and that would take me to 8.30. I got Easter bunnies on the brain, what can I say? 8.30. Okay, so I know that that was seven minutes. Again, I'm keeping track of my elapsed time right here. Matter of fact, let me get a different color. All right, so I got my seven minutes here. Let me rewrite that, there we go. Now I need to get to the closest friendly number that is next to my end time. So if I'm at 51, the and that's my end time, the friendly number before that, that ends in a zero, would be 50. So I want to make a jump from 830 all the way to 850. Now, because I was at 30, I know I'm just adding 20 here. So that's a 20 minute mark right here. So I'm gonna do 20 minutes. And if you wanted to do, uh, again, if you wanted to add by tens and make your intervals 10 minutes, you could do that too, right? Whatever you feel comfortable with. Now I'm eight, at 8.50, at 8.50, my next step is to get to 8.51. So I'm gonna go ahead and write that down here because it's so close to it. That'd obviously be one minute. And I need to add that to my elapsed time section. Now I've gotten to my end time, I just need to add that all the way up, and when I add that up, it gets me to 28 minutes, okay? And you can kind of cross out the word time there, because really, you should know it's time because we're doing within the hour, but it might be hours and minutes, right? So just put time there first, and you can always go back and erase it. 
So if I left for the grocery store at 8.23 and got back at 8.51, it took me 28 minutes to do that. All right, so now we have the you try. Okay, so go ahead and pause the video, all right? You can try the problem, push play and see how you did. If you're not there yet, you can just wait and do it with me and that's totally fine too. Hopefully you just paused it and checked it, or and solved it, so now let's check your work, okay? Now, make sure you're checking step by step because if you did make a mistake, that's awesome. That means you're learning, right? It's okay to fail as long as you learn. Um, and if you got it right, then you can celebrate each step as you go. So the first thing that you should be celebrating is that you wrote your sides check steps. So the first thing you wanna do is write your statement. Now that's important because now I know that I'm looking for anything about time, anything about the ice cream store, in the end of the game, okay? So Elijah's game ended at 3.18 p.m. That's a time, that's important. And they went to get ice cream to celebrate. They left the ice cream store at 3.49. You were looking for how much time passed. Time passed is our definition of elapsed time. So now in my head, I know I'm doing an elapsed time problem. So I'm going to go ahead and develop my plan and label start elapsed and end. Here is the tricky thing right here. If you don't conceptually understand what you're doing, this word end. Because if you're not careful, you would have written down 318 underneath the end column. And that is incorrect. If you remember, our elapsed time is the time that passed in an event. Okay, so the start of the event and the end of the event is important. You need to understand what the event is is then and the event is asking us how much time passed between the end of the game and the time they left the ice cream store so it's the time between the end of the game and the ice cream store it's not his game right which means the 318 is not the end it's the actual start of the event that we're talking about so i'm talking about 318 p.m and it ended at 349 p.m okay and i want to know how much elapsed time did i need so I'm gonna get a little bit more space and I'm going to draw my timeline down here, okay? And again, my steps, step number one is you want to get to the closest friendly number. So if I start at 318, my next friendly number would be 320, right? Which is a two minute jump. So I'm gonna write down two minutes, okay? And then I'm ending at 349. So my closest friendly number at 349 is 340. It can't be 350 because that would be after the time, okay? It's gotta be before the end time. That's why it's called the end. So my closest friendly number would be 340. So to get from 320 all the way to 340, right? Well, 20 plus 20 equals 40. So that means this is going to be a 20 minute hill. Again, if you want to break it apart and count by tens, you could do that too, but I feel pretty comfortable counting by 20s. And then I'm at 340 and all I need to do is get to 349. So I'm just going to do a nine minute hill now because I know 40 plus nine equals 49. I'm going to write that down and I've now reached my end time. So the only thing I need to do now is add up my elapsed time. Two plus nine is 11, regroup, that's 31. So my elapsed time is 31 minutes. Really what I hope you take from this lesson is that you're using the same mountains and hills timeline strategy, no matter if you're finding the start time, the end time, or the elapsed time. It's the same strategy. You just fill out the information you have, and then you just look for the missing piece using your mountains and hills in your timeline. Thank you so much for checking us out today. If you haven't already, please like and subscribe. Uh, we would love to have you join our Instructor Beats family on YouTube. You can. Uh, check us out on Facebook and like our page on Facebook. You can follow us on Instagram and Twitter. And you can always email us if you have questions or want to give us some feedback. Thank you so much. Please continue to check out our time unit playlist. Check out our lapse time song. It's awesome. Instructor Beats, out.